Ofer Shelach it is an Israeli journalist and politician, and he's served as a member of the Knesset for Yeshatid since 2013. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Is there going to be an end to the recent wave of terror that we're seeing right now? Well, it's not a question of uh, is there going to be an end. The, the question is what do we do now that it's been going on for like so three months now. And we look at it and, and when you analyze the, the, uh, the, the terrorists, their identity, whether they're organized or not, you can see that one of the major factors at play here is the fact that the Palestinian public sees the end of an era, the end of an era of Abbas, of Abu Mazen as leader of the Palestinians, and the end of an era of negotiations with Israel. So we have to neutralize that effect. We, ha we have to present to the Palestinians a, a better way, a better future, which is, for me, a better future for Israel as well, because otherwise we leave the, the scene to the forces at work, and the forces at work are not are negative ones, mostly. Right-wing Jewish terrorism has been a big topic of the news recently, especially with the release of this wedding video last week. Where is this coming from? Is it new or is it just a result of desperation because maybe the government's not doing enough to prevent all the recent terrorism? No, I don't think it has much to do with the government doing or not doing enough. We, we've seen for many years now the, a, the, the splinter groups, the, the extreme right wing, in, in, especially in the territories, acting as though the state, the, 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 what we call in, in Israel the kingdom, not, not in, as in, in having a king at the, at the uh, throne, but the state exists for them insofar as it serves their purpose. And if not, the, then the state, its institutions, the army, those are the, 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 the groups that they, you know, fought with soldiers, that, that uh, uh, you know, cut tires of, of army jeeps and so on. And when this is not dealt with correctly, when the rabbis who said uh, uh, soldiers should not obey orders to evacuate uh, homes in the Gaza Strip or, or in, the, in, in the West Bank, when, when those are not dealt with correctly, then you will have splinter splinter groups that go to the extreme that we're seeing now. We have to uh, show that the state exists, that the, 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 its institutions exist, and if that happens, those people will be isolated, and once they're isolated, they can be dealt with as all criminals should be dealt with. So let's talk about that a little bit more. What should the government be doing in addition to cracking down on rabbis who are inciting violence to, to kind of stem this Jewish terrorism? The, the, the people responsible for the, the horrible murder at uh, Duma, the murder of a, a Palestinian family, should be dealt with as criminals. They should be investigated, they should, they should be prosecuted, brought to justice. But the, the, the atmosphere, by which what we call in, in, in Israel the, 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 the wink atmosphere. You know, you can do whatever you want, the, the government. But back in, in 10 years ago, when certain rabbis said that uh, um, uh, orders to evacuate uh, people from their homes in, in the Gaza Strip should not be obeyed, those rabbis were not dealt with. Certain rabbis who openly discussed the question of when is it allowed to murder a Palestinian should be dealt with for incitement. If you do that, you isolate the, what I call the splinter splinter groups, and then you deal with them as common criminals, and they are very few in number, it's, it's a couple of dozens uh, uh, who are actively engaged in that, and Israel has enough force to deal with them as, they, as it should. So you talked a little bit about the army now as well. We can see that all of Yeshatid's efforts to draft ultra-Orthodox Jews into the army are going into vain with all these protests that are happening. Why is this happening? What's happening right now? No, the, the problem is not the protest. The pro problem is that the law we passed in the last Knesset, after months of discussion, both at the governmental level and the, and the parliamentary level, and, and, and which actually uh, increased the numbers of, of Haredi, of ultra Orthodox who went to the army. It, it, the, the number grew by 60% from the time that the law was passed till now. Now, this coalition, under uh, uh, pressure from the ultra Orthodox parties, uh, uh, sort of changed it back 
And now for eight years now, till 2023, basically there's no reason for any uh, Haredi to join the army. Now there are forces within the Haredi community, within Haredi society, uh, uh, forces at work which bring more young people to join the army and I think those should be encouraged. But on the other hand, it should be clear that in, in the uh, short term and long term, the, the uh, equality between citizens, the fact that everybody has to go to some form of service or other should be maintained by the government, otherwise this will not hold and this is what we are trying to do now, we're trying to protest, we went to the Supreme Court and I basically, personally, I don't even think this, this change in law passed by this government is going to, uh, to be ratified by the Supreme Court, I think it's going to be brought down by the Supreme Court. Speaking of the army, um, last month we actually heard about major plans to downsize. It's a funny thing to talk about now given the recent wave of violence and also these efforts to kind of bring more Haredi Jews into the military. No, it's, it's not downsizing. It's, uh, and and it, it should be clear, you know, we, people who uh, uh, were in countries where the army is, is, a, uh, is not a conscript army as it is in Israel, but it's volunteers, paid volunteers, look at downsizing as though we're firing people from, from their jobs or we're downsizing a, a factory or something. Uh, we're not talking about a, a, a uh, we're talking about a smaller number, somewhat slightly smaller number of officers at certain points and this is to make the army more efficient. The budget is in fact going to grow the, and I hope the efficiency is going to grow. I'm in, in the Knesset, I'm a, uh, the chairman of the subcommittee that deals with the force structure of the IDF when we are overseeing this very closely. I think the plans by the, the current chief of staff are, are good. I think they, they are going to create a better, more efficient, and not, not a, uh, unnecessarily a, a cheaper army. So I think he's moving in the right direction. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.